Here's a short video on approach to a breast mass. I'll be showing this short algorithm on how to approach a patient with a palpable breast mass and then giving you some tips on the history and physical for a patient with a breast mass. So let's start with the algorithm. First, if a patient comes in with a palpable breast mass, you're kind of going to stratify what you're doing based on their age. Let's start with the simplest case in adolescence. If you have an adolescent and the mass is not concerning, meaning that it has the following features, there's only one, um, it's firm, it's pretty well circumscribed, it's mobile, it's cyclic with their periods, so it becomes tender slightly before their periods, it's likely a benign fibroadenoma. You can observe a mass like this, but this is really the only mass that you should just observe and do nothing else. And even for the benign fibroadenoma, you do want to reevaluate the patient in six weeks. This gives them one or two menstrual periods to see if the benign, suspected benign fibroadenoma decreases in size and tenderness. And if it does, then you're done with that patient. But again, remember that this is only for patients that are uh, adolescents, and this is only for masses that are not concerning. If the suspected fibroadenoma increases in size, you're going to move on to imaging. So let's talk about the kinds of imaging that you'll do for your patient. So if your patient is below 30 years old, you're going to start with the ultrasound and then add a mammogram if necessary. If they're above 30 years old, you can start with the mammogram and then do the ultrasound. The reason for this difference is that patients that are under 30 years old tend to have more dense breasts. and this means that the mammogram is less accurate. So if they're under 30 years old, start with the ultrasound. If they're over 30 years old, start with the mammogram. In uh, both these cases, you'll get some features of the mass. We'll talk about the more cystic appearing features, and then we'll talk about the more cancerous appearing features. So if the mass is smooth, meaning homogeneous, if it's mobile, if it's thin-walled, if it's anechoic or fluid-filled, and if it has no echogenic debris and it's well circumscribed, it's likely a simple cyst. If the simple cyst is asymptomatic, you don't have to do anything. You can just observe it if it's not bothering the patient. If the simple cyst is symptomatic, if the patient feels pain or pressure, wants something done about it, you could do a fine needle aspiration where you go in and actually pull out the contents of the simple cyst. If it's a non-bloody aspirate, meaning it's clear, straw-colored, green, gray, it could be weird colors, but it's not bloody, and the cyst resolves, then you're done. Um, you don't have to worry about cancer. If it's a non-bloody aspirate and the cyst is still there, you still see some like loculations or some parts of the mass that are still there, or if the cyst recurs over the next few weeks, then you want to move on to imaging, and that's usually ultrasounded. Um, guided cord needle biopsy. So you, you, you want to remove to imaging and removing that mass. If the simple cyst was identified and then the fine needle aspiration showed a bloody aspirate, then you also want to do an ultrasound and remove the rest of that uh, mass. You can also consider additional imaging in this case to get a better idea of what you're looking at. So in general, in the cyst pathway, you can leave it alone if it's not symptomatic. You can remove it with fine needle aspiration if it is symptomatic. If it comes out non-bloody and it just goes away and you don't see it again, that's great. That person has a low risk for cancer. If it comes out bloody or if it comes out uh, and persists and recurs, then you want to do some more imaging with ultrasound and do a core needle biopsy and um, take a look at it, consider additional imaging. Now let's consider the other pathway. If it's a complex breast mass, this means it has irregular or indistinct borders, thick-walled, it could be heterogeneous, it could be septated, have solid and cystic components, or it can have calcifications. In this case, you have three options for tissue sampling. You could do a fine needle aspiration, which is the most minimally invasive, the core needle biopsy, or the open excisional biopsy. The benefit of the fine needle aspiration is that it doesn't really hurt. It's a pretty quick procedure. Um, it can be done very uh, very immediately in the, obvious, in the office. This is what you want to do for small masses only and for suspected cysts only. The benefits of the core needle biopsy, a more extensive procedure where you actually get a chunk of the mass, is that you can do your receptor testing on it. This is your ER, PR, HER2, NU. This is uh, estrogen receptor, progesterone receptor, and HER2 receptor testing. The benefit of the open excisional biopsy is that you can actually remove the suspicious mass in its entirety. You can then do frozen sections, send it to pathology, and uh, they'll give you a characterization of the pathology of the mass. So this will be for diagnosing a type of cancer. And uh, this also lets you do the sentinel node biopsy as well. While you're in there, you can sample the adjacent nodes and see if the mass has spread to those nodes. Once you've done your tissue sampling, you can then consider 
uh, different treatments based on the findings of your tissue sampling. You might consider surgical resection. There are a couple options for this. You could do a wide local excision versus a lumpectomy or a total mastectomy. And again, you can remove the lymph nodes if you found that those contained um, spreading of the mass. You can also consider radiation. And lastly, you consider chemotherapy. You would consider different types of chemotherapy based on the findings of your receptor testing. So if it's estrogen receptor or progesterone receptor positive, they can use tamoxifen or raloxifene, which are selective estrogen receptor modifiers. You can also use an, uh, aromatase inhibitors. These are the drugs that end in ozole, so like anastrozole or letrozole. If the patient has a mass that's HER2 new positive, they get this monoclonal antibody trastuzumab. So this is our algorithm for approach to a breast mass. Next, here's some history and physical tips. We're gonna go through them pretty briefly. When taking the history of a patient with a breast mass, you can always start with your standard history of present illness stuff. I use the acronym SOCRATES, where you ask about the site of the pain, discomfort, or mass, the onset, when did it start, the character, what does it feel like, is it a deep pressure, is it a sharp pressure, is it shooting, uh, the radiation, does it radiate up your back? Does it radiate down into your abdomen? Does it radiate up to your armpit? Uh, any associations? Is it worse in the morning? Is it worse with your periods? Uh, the time course, has it been getting better or worse um, over the past months, weeks? And uh, exacerbating relieving factors. So again, does the, your period make it worse? Does it get better when you exercise? Does it get worse when you press on it? Um, severity, how bad is it out of 10? If it's just a one out of 10 discomfort versus a seven out of 10 discomfort? Some questions that you might ask specifically for a breast mass include a change in breast appearance, if the breasts have been asymmetric or changing in size recently, if the patient has single or multiple masses, if the patient has noticed a change in the mass appearance, if they've noticed any skin changes or nipple changes or nipple discharge, any skin changes, uh, nipple inversion would be a, a notable feature to note. If they have any nipple discharge and if that discharge is unilateral versus bilateral, um, as well as the timing and the color of that discharge. You can also ask about the cyclic nature of the mass with the, me with the menstrual cycles. So again, this would make you think of a fibroadenoma or maybe fibrocystic changes that both tend to cycle with your menstrual cycles. Is the mass tender or non-tender? If the mass is red and kind of warm and fluctuant, you might suspect an abscess. Um, people typically get breast abscesses after having mastitis, so that could be another mass presentation. If the mass is fixed or mobile, and if the patient has had a recent trauma or surgery, this might make you suspect fat necrosis, which is a pathologic change in the breast tissue after a trauma or surgery. While taking the history of a patient with a breast mass, you also want to consider the risk factors for breast cancer. Um, essentially, these risk factors amount to the amount of estrogen exposure. So all of these kind of relate to estrogen exposure. The more estrogen you've had in your lifetime, the more predisposed you are to having a breast mass. So older age, older people have had estrogen affecting their body for longer. Younger menarche, so if you start your period earlier, you'll start being exposed to estrogen uh, more, more frequently and earlier. If you have older menopause, same idea. You've had more cycles uh, to expose you to estrogen. Use of OCPs, so if you take oral contraceptive pills, those contain estrogen. That'll be more exposure to estrogen. If you're obese, estrogen is made in uh, peripheral adipose tissue, and that'll be more exposure to estrogen there. If you have high bone density, that's a sign of estrogen because estrogen helps build your bones. Um, that same estrogen can also cause breast cancer. <clears throat> if you have no or low parity, so if you don't have too many kids, that means that your body never got a break from having periods while you were pregnant. So that can also predispose you to breast cancer. Um, these are just risk factors. These don't mean you have breast cancer, um, just to get an idea of, of your patient's risks. Um, other risk factors include family history, only really relevant in first degree relatives like your mother or your sister, and the gene testing, BRCA1 or BRCA2 gene testing would uh, be indicative of breast cancer. Next, on the physical exam, in general, like most physical exams, you want to inspect first and then palpate. And when you ins inspect, you can also look for these features, changes in breast appearance, size, symmetry, any discharge, any nipple inversion, any skin changes. There are some specific signs that are concerning for cancer, <clears throat> and these are worth knowing. So I've kind of listed their pathology here, as well as what you might see on physical exam. 
if a breast mass has invaded the lactiferous ducts, that's a sign of nipple, or that might manifest as nipple retraction on exam. If there's epidermal infiltration by neoplastic cells, you might see scaling or ulceration on exam. If the mass invades the suspensory ligaments, also called the Cooper ligaments, you might see skin retraction. If the mass obstructs the dermal lymphatics, you might see this peau d'orange appearance, and that's a sign for inflammatory breast cancer. It kind of looks like the skin is bunching up uh, because because the lymphatics are blocked. You have kind of a backup of lymphatics, and the skin is or the the fluid is kind of accumulating under the skin, and the skin is kind of dimpled down, and it makes it look like orange skin. So it's called peau d'orange, um, sign of inflammatory breast cancer. If you have invasion of the mass into adjacent breast tissue, it might be fixed and not mobile. Remember, this is in contrast to a fibroadenoma that was kind of mobile, uh, singular, and cyclic with periods. If the mass has lymphatic spread to regional lymph nodes, you can also notice axillary lymphadenopathy. So in addition to inspecting and palpating the breast, you do want to make sure that you palpate the uh, armpit as well. So when you're doing an exam, you not only want to palpate the breast up to around the nipple in a very systematic fashion, you also want to palpate the armpit when the patient is sitting up so that the breast tissue doesn't get in the way of the axilla. So this was just a short video on approach to a breast mass. I hope it was helpful. Thank you for listening.